Hello everybody, welcome back. Let's uh, let's make this one quick. I mean, it's uh, it's been a fair old bounce these last few days, and the bounce continues. But we are approaching our major area of uh, what I would consider a major area of resistance, which is currently coming in at today of thirty-eight thousand four hundred. It's the uh, it's the ten exponential basically. It's been a major contributor to to uh, big pullbacks basically since the top. So the top came down. We as soon as we lost that area of support, it basically every time we came up to touch it, it's caused pretty 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 nasty. Uh, events there has been a few occasions where we broke up above it and it came to the uh, center of the Bollinger Band but pretty much consistent with a, with a major downtrend since then this is where we finally uh, lost it completely and just completely collapsed and since then it is, it is more or less been the uh, the only time we've ever come to test it has ended in a in a bit of a rejection to say the least really <laughs> there was this area here where we did come up to test the major area of resistance which is this massive descending trend line so again you know we're in the same boat as we've been for all this time um, you know until these resistances uh, turn to supports they are resistances and uh, just like a significant uptrend uh, uses these uh, moving averages as supports you can see on this uh, major uptrend here uh, 10 exponential held it every single time there was little moves back down to the center of the Bollinger Band uh, up towards the top down to the Bollinger Band up 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 uh, it's it's the same deal really on the way down uh, and again you yeah, know Bitcoin is aggressive on the way up it's also aggressive on the way down and, uh, and and but the same logic will apply you know each moving average of significance so firstly being the 10 secondly being the 20 moving average or the Bollinger Band Center and then after that we've got the 50 exponential and the 200 exponential and they, they they seem so far away at the moment that it's, it's, it's kind of Kind of, it just feels impossible that we'll get there. But today there is the the the, the meeting, uh, you know, the the day of reckoning. The the, the you know, Chairman Powell, you know, Jay Powell's going to speak. He's going to say something, and that something could be anything, and that will cause major ups or major downs in the market. What are we doing? <laughs> I mean, how can we trade that? Do you mean how is that a tradable thing? I mean, it's not, is it, really? Let's face it, it's not. Uh, this just goes back to when I tried my hand at uh, doing Forex trading, which, again, is, is it can be strategic based on the technicals, and most of the time that works until one day someone turns up and says, and says basically it's just just says something and then suddenly the chart becomes completely irrelevant and then some and that's basically what's going to happen today the chart is essentially irrelevant we're at the mercy of words coming out of the federal reserve basically so understanding that um is probably the best thing to do uh, and recognize that yeah we are approaching rejection anyway you know even in the most bullish circumstance we're approaching rejection at 38,400 thereabouts uh, and if that breaks which it could you know even if um, without the bullish news let's just say he, he turns up and just says bah Nice to see you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Good night. And so it basically says nothing. Um, then yeah, we can continue up to, uh, and to this major level, forty thousand five hundred thereabouts, which is pretty much the uh, where 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 we found this major top. Uh, these areas of resistance over here, and uh, these areas of support, and this area of support over here, and also the massive breakdown zone. It's also the the uh, twenty and the twenty one exponential moving average there. So I mean that would that would pretty much mark you know the, the most likely area for a major rejection if we break through here it seems so unrealistic to imagine that we'll break through there but you know we could but based on the chart so far nothing to suggest that we will um unfortunately for the rsi you know at the moment yeah well i say unfortunately i mean it, there's no way of forming divergence with with this kind of um measurement i mean it's just a, a bounce on the way up really that's 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 all there is to it we've spoken about how this was oversold to the to, to a relatively you know large extent not the biggest extent yeah we can see here this is the the march crash uh, since then, you know, we did dip down here quite dramatically in May, but you know, after then, or even before then, you know, this this has been the largest read since you know the original March, the massive March crash. Um, 
which means that obviously if we're in a bear market we should expect lower lows to fall on the RSI you know and that is the case and uh, we can also recognize that there is a trend line of resistance forming here um, which could end up being a you know a good thing a change of momentum could form here and we could break out of here and that that would be the powerful move that that brings us up to the 40,000 or the 41,000 area and, and that's where we are at right now on the daily so there is on the daily there is that you know but again at this very moment in time we're pretty much at the resistance now if we go to the Four hourly again. Yeah, this is just um, this is just showing us that we're just bouncing, and th there's nothing more to it than that. And this is a bounce. It's been a powerful bounce. Uh, MACD is creeping up into the uh, the bullish territory, but I mean, as we approach all these major areas of resistance, including the one on the four hourly here, with the ten exponential, as you can see, has has lifted us up, and we come up to the uh, the fifty exponential, which I would expect to be a major area of resistance on its own. You can see that that has historically been the case on the four hourly chart. You know, coming up to test it, bang, test it, bang. A little bit of a dancey round, and uh, there's a 200 that touched it here. Uh, you know, when there's such divergence, it's going to go down to the next one, which is going to be the 50, so 50, 50, 50, or, uh, and then the 200 and the 50, 50, 50, 50. So basically, this is the first time we've touched the 50 in what, about a week. And uh, yeah, we're getting rejection from it. The last four hourly candle looking like we want to get rejected from it here as well. Uh, and again, there's nothing on this chart which speaks bullish. Um, you know, we we could have seen this on the on on the way down. That yeah, we got we had bullish divergence form. We spoke about this. It wasn't particularly strong. It was stronger on the smaller term time frames. And I would expect to see if we go down to those now. We'll go to the two hourly that we would see um, not an exhausted chart, but a pretty high read across the board. So we have got money flow index coming into uh, into the 80s, and, and, and you know, when we come up to this kind of level, this is more or less it. Really, there is there is moments into the 90s, extremely rare moments, but we do get areas like that. And again, this is after large bounces. So this was a big bounce from the bottom to the top, making the money flow index go into really, really over overheated territory. So it does it does look like um, we're fizzling out for the moment. I would say on on all time frames. And if we don't get rejected from this moment right now, you know, suggesting that the four hourly, you know, it says we might get rejected now, then it's not a, it's not a great deal higher than this. Uh, less than a thousand dollars before the the first major area of rejection takes place. So that's unfortunate. I have to say it's unfortunate. So we'll have to see what's coming uh, down the line with this um, with this you know with these words of wisdom from from the Fed. We'll see what that says. So we we'll look at Bitcoin dominance now. So Bitcoin dominance uh, still dancing around on that weekly, uh, trying to break out actually from the uh, the center of the Bollinger Band, which would be horrendous for altcoins. You know, so if Bitcoin uh, pulls back and we break out from here, then yeah, destruction, absolute complete chaos and destruction for altcoins, definitely. But you know, until that happens, this could be considered an area of, of uh, resistance and uh, and a rejection from this level could be pretty uh, pretty pretty good. So if we do get a little bit more upside for Bitcoin, or if Bitcoin goes sideways at least for a couple of days, which seems unlikely, uh, then altcoins could rally. Uh, but to be honest, at the moment, the, the, the overall vibe generally does appear to be uh, one of resistance at multiple levels above us, uh, which would mean chaos for altcoins when, when that, um, that uh, rejection takes place. Like I say, it could take place here, could take place at the 10 exponential, or the, the the Bollinger Band Center, uh, and and the highest I would imagine being about forty one thousand. Yeah, so we we are looking for rejection. You know, at any point to be honest with you, there's so many so many layers on different time frames above us. And again, with the smaller term time frames being in, uh, you know quite high on the money flow index, suggesting that liquidity is there for a potential dump, um, or just you know just to sell off. Really, the liquidity is there at the moment on the short term time frames. It wouldn't take long for that to start breaking down and uh, and a cascading effect. Uh, similar to these uh, dramatic dumps that we've seen already, so uh, yeah, a bit, a bit um, of, a, I suppose, a disappointing outlook on this. But um, yeah, the, I suppose the, the the hopium that we have uh, that we could imply is the the the, uh, the RSI on the daily uh, that could be looking at a a breakout from this level. But again, when we're looking at resistances, we do have to consider them as resistances until we break out from them. If we break out from here on the daily, then yeah, I mean, who cares about the one hourly, the two hourly? 
um, you know, they, they'll be kind of irrelevant. They will just show like a really big move, uh, and then we just focus more on the daily and uh, and and the four hourly. So again, if we bring it back down to the four hourly and where we are at the moment, so we're talking about the uh, t the uh, 50 exponential moving average. We've got all these areas of resistance above us um, on a horizontal basis, so 41,000. That's uh, that, that 40 to 41,000 area, and uh, and then just shortly above there. Yeah, and again, this is just on today's, you know, on this four hourly candle body. 41,700 is the massive descending trend line that's been such a pain in the ass and caused such enormous breakdowns when we ta when we tagged them. So beginning here, tagging here, massive pullback. Tagged over here, massive pullback. Tagged over here, massive pullback. So if this is the uh, if this is going to be the, the the chart that we look at for the moment, unfortunately, we really do have to think about you know rather than buying the dip for those who are a bit more experienced, um, it would be shorting the resistances basically, um, and that would be it really. Uh, look, uh, today for me would definitely be a bit of a no trade day to be honest with you until until certain uh, things have been spoken, uh, and then we'll see if. Um, if, if it's going to have an even more bleak outlook for the overall markets than it is already and because obviously everything is all tied together now it's all very much sucked into the system uh, Bitcoin and uh, with that goes uh, the vast majority of altcoins you know because that's obviously all under Bitcoin's umbrella it's very unlikely that many altcoins uh, or hardly any altcoins will survive that so anyway this is this is the deal this is what we're looking at on the uh, on um, the Nasdaq and the Nasdaq did find a bounce but as of today the pre market's coming down a little bit so uh, that, to be honest though I have to say uh, you know when it comes to um, when it comes to it, yeah. You know, actually, this isn't the pre-market yet. This is yesterday's close. Um, but the pre-market I I've seen already is down. So what would be what I'd be expecting for the Nasdaq is exactly the same for Bitcoin. Everybody's waiting to see if they're going to speed up the tapering basically, or if they're going to keep it the same. Which again, it isn't. You know, it's not. It's not great. You know, <laughs> or if they're going to do anything to try and lift the stock market, which I think would be an unrealistic outcome uh, for them because the bigger problem at, uh, at hand would be inflation. That would be a much bigger problem than the stock market. The stock markets almost certainly recover uh, over time. Uh, an inflation, a hyperinflation event you know, that, that, that got out of control uh, would, well, we've seen you know, in other countries, haven't we, uh, and throughout history. Uh, that something like that will bring any uh, yeah that that the stock market will mean nothing at that point you know nothing will mean anything at that point it would be absolute devastation and considering that the 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 world uh, well, the, the 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 dollar is the world reserve currency they've got even more at stake it's not just their own country it's it's pretty much every country so you know to expect them to say oh, I'm not gonna you know we've been a little harsh we've been a little harsh let's let's have a little bit of relief come on don't worry about it guys we're gonna turn those money printers back on and we can carry on this party all the way up because all this is doing this is like um, I imagine a heroin addict saying I'll tell you what I'm just gonna I am gonna quit uh, I'll just have one more fix just one more just just one more just I'll just have one last um, hit on that and on that needle and uh, and then tomorrow I'll quit you know it's you, know, what you, you do have to give it up properly at some point, and I think that you know, they know that this is they have to give it up at this point. Whether they speed it up any further, I don't think they will. I think uh, I think it will sort itself out given enough time. Uh, they will need to see what the next inflation report will be. But uh, yeah, then I'd, I would be very surprised if they do anything to help stocks um, because. Yeah, the bigger problem is obviously inflation, and that does have to be dealt with big time. Anyway, I'm going to leave it with you there, guys. Live stream tonight, anyway, for the Patreon members, so I'll see you there. And uh, we'll know a little more. I think we'll know a little more at that point. Actually, thinking about it now, maybe the um, maybe maybe the, the, the speech and the announcements will be taking place at that time. We'll see, anyway, we'll see. But overall, definitely a no-trade zone today. We'll have to wait and see what's spoken about, and then play the charts accordingly after that because today would essentially be like it would be like going to the bookies uh, you know and placing a blind bet really right I'm going to leave it uh, thanks for watching guys hope you have a nice day take it easy